What is up guys, Mountie here from Mount GT with a real quick note before this video begins. This video is going to be pretty long. It's an unboxing and overview of the software that goes with the product and a little demonstration at the end. So it's gonna be a long video. I will have timestamps listed in the description below for your skipping around pleasure. If you wanna skip around, see different things in the video. I also wanted to point out that I am in a slightly new space for college. I have a college dorm tech tour coming very, very soon, so stay tuned for that. Otherwise, enjoy the video. What is up guys, Mountie here from Mount GT back again with another video, and this one is gonna be really exciting. I have been waiting for a day like this for quite a long time, and the day has finally come. So as you guys may know, I do some sim racing. I've made a couple of videos on Assetto Corsa with my wheel setup. And as you probably know, if you've watched those videos, I use a Logitech G29. It's a very basic wheel. It's the wheel that a lot of people start on when they get into sim racing, and eventually they outgrow it and have to move on to bigger and better things. Well, in today's video, we're gonna be unboxing my brand new sim racing setup from a little company you may have heard of known as Moza Racing. So that is obviously just the wheel. Um, that's not the wheelbase that I got, which I am about to show you guys. But yeah, in this video, we're gonna be unboxing my brand new sim racing setup. I'm actually recording this video a few days earlier than I should be. I haven't received the pedal set that I bought just yet. So I'm just gonna be recording this first little part and then I'll pick it up when I actually do get the pedals. But I am really excited. I couldn't wait to like open all this stuff and check it out. Uh, but I wanted to get my first reaction. So I figured I'm gonna go ahead and record me unboxing this little part and then you guys will see me unboxing the pedals, obviously in the same video once I get them in a couple days. But let's go ahead and jump right into this. All right, so as I mentioned earlier, this is not everything that I ordered. I am missing my SRP pedals, which I will be unboxing in this video just after all this stuff and once it actually arrives. I'm filming this video on a Saturday and my pedals arrive on next Tuesday. But I really wanted to crack into this stuff. I couldn't wait and I also wanted to get my First impressions and everything, I didn't want to just like package everything back up and then reopen it for you guys for the video. So we're going to go ahead and crack into what we have and then we'll obviously cut to Tuesday when I have the pedals. So I've already shown you guys that we are going to be rocking, if I can fit it in there, there we go, the CSV2 steering wheel. I love the design of this thing. I've read so many reviews and watched so many videos. I'm super excited to start playing around with this. I also got the HGP shifter, as you can see, Moses' first party shifter. I'm excited for this. It actually has uh, seven gears, which my Logitech G driving force shifter, I can't remember the exact name of it, but it only has six gears in reverse. So I'll be able to drive seven speed manual transmission cars, which I'm really looking forward to. And then these two boxes are the boxes that you guys do not know what is in them. Obviously I do. I'm actually not 100% sure what's in this box, but I have a pretty good idea. I know it's not the pedals, I know that much. Uh, and then I have this box. So we're gonna go ahead and open what you guys have already seen, the shifter and the wheel, and then we'll get into these two boxes. So let me move these ones out of the way. And I am just sitting here on my floor because I do not have enough space anywhere else to film me opening these very large boxes. So let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit here. So we have the Moza Racing HGP shifter. So I actually have already opened the shifter and the wheel, so I have already seen them. These arrived before I left for my trip. I was on a trip, uh, and which is when a lot of this stuff came in, so I wasn't able to see it all right when it came in. But the shifter and the wheel arrived before I left on my trip, so I have seen these, but this is the Moza Racing HGP shifter. Over here, you've got some detailed information about the shifter, so it is a seven speed shifter plus reverse. It is made from aeroplane grade aluminum. It is realistic feeling, I'll be the judge of that. I do drive a manual transmission car every day. H pattern with locked reverse and seventh gear. Now that's one weird thing about the shifter. The seventh gear is a push down seventh gear. So you have to push the shifter down to get into seventh. Kind of like what you would do if you were trying to get into reverse. I don't really know how that's going to affect like shifting from sixth to seventh in a car that has a seventh gear, but we'll have to play around with that and see what that's like. And replaceable shifter knob, which is pretty cool. So let's go ahead and crack this open. So up top, we are greeted with your shift knob. It's got a real nice weight to it. We'll take a look at that in a second. 
inside this bag, you have some cables. So you have a USB, you have a USB cable and then you have an RJ connector. So if you have the Moza, I believe the R12 has a port on the back of the base for like just a direct connection so you don't have to plug it into a USB port on your computer. You can just plug it straight into the base so that way you're taking up less USB ports. But if you have like the R9 or the R5 or I think even the R21 and R16, they don't have those ports. So you would just use the USB cable, which is what I will be doing. That might give you a bit of a hint as to what I have in one of those other boxes. I believe there's one more thing in here. So there's also a little tool kit. So you've got a wrench, an Allen key, some screws for mounting the shifter, and then looks to be a couple of other little pieces. There's like little rubber dampening pads for quieting the shifter down. We'll take a closer look at those in just a second. If we lift this little foam piece up in there is the shifter. So let's go ahead and pull it out. back into the box. So this is the Moza Racing HGP shifter. So let's go ahead and pull it out of this plastic bag. And yep, here we go. So you can see you've got reverse, first, third, fifth, and seventh up top, second, fourth, and sixth on the bottom, just like you would in a real car. And I would hope that it would be just like that. So I can say it's got a pretty good weight to it. It's not like super heavy, but uh, it's also not like super light to the point where it feels like cheap. So yeah, there is our shifter. It feels pretty good. I feel like it's a little bit stiff. Maybe it'll feel better once I have it like actually mounted to my table. But yeah, push down for seventh gear is gonna be interesting. We'll see how that actually affects the driving experience. Let's also take a closer look at our shift knob here. If we just go ahead and take it out of this little bag. So it is a metal shift knob, if I can get it to focus here. All right, so yep, this is it. You can see it doesn't have like a, it doesn't have an indication of the pattern up top. It is just a smooth black round shifter. There's the thread on the inside to screw it onto the shifter. Feels good in the hand. It's not bad at all. I, uh, I like it. It would be cool if it had the pattern kind of etched onto it, but the pattern is etched onto the face of the shifter itself. So that is not a big deal at all. All right, so what we're gonna go ahead and do is take our shift knob here and just screw it onto the shifter. And it's on just like that. Literally as simple as that. And now we have our H pattern shifter. So I'm not really gonna do too much shifting with it. Oh, here on the back you have the port for the RJ connector and then you've got your USB port. This is what the bottom of it looks like. This is the mounting surface. Uh, Mosa Racing logo, just like that. So yeah, I'm not gonna do too much more shifting with this thing until I get it mounted so I can kind of get a feel for what it's like to shift like while it's properly mounted. but. That is our shifter. Next up is our wheel. All right, so a bit of a bigger box here, but we have the CSV2 steering wheel. So this is actually the part that I'm kind of the most excited about. It's obviously really cool to have direct drive, but this wheel is what we're gonna be interacting with most of the time. So CSV2 steering wheel, hold on tight, experience real racing, Moza racing. I also think, uh, before I get any further, it is important to note that I paid for all of this myself. None of this is being influenced by Moza. They did not send me this gear. I paid full price plus the very expensive shipping to get all of this here. I ordered it directly from them. So on the top, you've just got some more logos and branding, Moza CSV2 steering wheel. On the back, you've got a picture of the wheel attached to what I believe is the R9 base. And then over here on the side of the box, it just gives you some details about the wheel. 13 inch aeroplane grade aluminum, photoelectric magnetic paddles, RGB programmable flow shift light, 
and customized quick release from Real Racing. That is something I've been hearing a lot about. The quick release system from like Moza's wheels is really, really solid. So I'm excited to play around with that. So let's go ahead and crack into this. Pull that down. Looks like I have it upside down actually. <laughs> Not the most pleasant noise in the world, but there is our wheel straight up. We also have like a quick start guide and a sticker sheet. I probably will not be using the sticker sheet, but it is cool that they do include the sticker sheet in case you want to customize the look of your wheel. But here is our wheel. Let me adjust this so that I can see what you guys are seeing. So yeah, here is our Moza Racing CS V2 wheel. So the difference between the CS V2 and the CS V1 is that the CS V2 is compatible with Moza's newer bases that don't have wireless, like the Bluetooth module. I think the bases still do, but it also just makes sure that they can work more reliably. I'm not 100% sure, but I do know that the V2 versions of their wheels just increase compatibility across their lineup. So let's go ahead and pull this out. Inside you have another little tool set so you get an Allen key. If it'll focus, it probably won't. Oh, kind of did. You get an Allen key in there and then you also get some rubber pieces to kind of dampen the sound of the shifters because they are pretty loud and some spacers and some screws just a couple of accessories needed if you want to customize the way things feel and sound let's move this out of the way and focus on the wheel itself let's go ahead and pull it out of this little plastic bag so this little smell test doesn't quite smell like leather like the logitech g29 does but this is our wheel. So the reason why I went with this over, I guess, really anything else, I didn't go for the ES wheel because it didn't have rotary encoders, so it didn't have these little twisty knobs, which are called rotary encoders. It didn't have those, and let's see, what else, why else did I go with this? I didn't go with the RS just because the extra buttons and the LED lights were not worth literally double the price to me and you get pretty much all the same functionality out of this wheel. And I also didn't need the dual clutch paddles that they include on the back. And this is still a very high quality wheel. It's gonna be perfect for drifting and driving most cars around a track. You've got your paddles here. Sounds nice and clicky. On the front of the wheel here, you've got your Moza Racing logo. You've got two buttons up top on either side, as well as a little joystick. Though from what I understand, it's not really an analog stick. It acts more like a D-pad, which is really interesting. I have no idea why that they would configure it that way, but they did. Up here, you've got your RGB rev light, and these joysticks actually do click in, so they also act as buttons. Then at the bottom of the wheel here, you've got your rotary encoders, like I mentioned before. You've got two of them which also do click in as buttons, so there's some more extra button functionality for you. And then on the bottom, you've got two more buttons. First impressions of the buttons themselves, they don't feel like the, the normal buttons, these like face buttons here, here and here, they don't feel like the Logitech buttons. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. They're not like as like hard clicky as Logitech buttons are. We'll see like, how my experience is with them once I actually start using the wheel. But these buttons, the ones on the dials and on the joysticks, feel nice and clicky. The ones on the joysticks are a little bit shallow, but they do still feel good. Overall, in the hand, it feels good. It's definitely bigger than the Logitech wheel, so it's gonna take me some getting used to, but I am excited. Uh, and then obviously on the back here, you've got Moza's famed quick release. You've also got the little window here for the Bluetooth module for com uh, communicating with V1 bases. Uh, but yeah, you've got Moses Quick Release here, which everyone always says really good things about, so I'm excited to kind of feel what that's like. And then you've also got your magnetic paddle shifters, which are actually made out of real forged carbon fiber, 
which is really cool to me. I'm like a huge, let's see if we can get it to focus here. I'm like a huge car enthusiast and car nerd and I love forged carbon fiber like when it's not overdone. So having real forged carbon fiber pedals on my sim steering wheel is honestly one of the coolest things I could ever ask for. So that is the CS V2 steering wheel. So now we're gonna get into those other two boxes that I, myself, well, I know for sure what one of them is, but one of them, the other one I'm not 100% sure about. So we're actually gonna crack into the one I'm not 100% sure about first. Just because the box is a little beat up and I wanna make sure that everything in here is still in good shape. I don't really know what side to open it from. So we're just gonna crack into it here. All right, so we have the clutch pedal for the SRP pedal set. I don't know why they put it in this. I feel like this is a really big box for how small you're gonna see this pedal is. Uh, it's literally just the clutch pedal. We also have, oh, the table mounting bracket for our wheelbase. I kind of forgot that I ordered this and I actually do need this because I don't have a sim rig. And then I've got the SRP pedal accessory kit to kind of customize the brake feel. This is something that a lot of people recommend and they're like, oh, it should have had one of these springs from factory. So we're gonna be trying that out once we actually do get the pedals. So we're gonna to toss that to the side. And uh, I probably won't actually really show you guys the mounting bracket. It's literally just a bracket. I'll show you guys when I have it mounted on the table. The SRP accessory kit is literally just going to be a couple of springs and a damper. Not the most exciting thing in the world. We'll probably have a closer look at it when we actually get our full set of pedals, but we will take a look at the clutch pedal. So I am very big on driving manual transmission cars. Ever since I learned how to drive stick, it's kind of like, I'm obsessed with it. So being able to drive stick in sim racing games is important to me. So, hold on, let me straighten out my camera here. Okay, so as I was saying, driving manual transmission in sim racing games is important to me. So when I was purchasing the new setup, I had to make sure that I included a clutch pedal. So, any details on the box? Nope, it's literally just a basic clutch pedal. So this will kind of give us some insight into what our full set of pedals will be like. Go ahead and pull this out. One thing I will say, I really like Moses' packaging. I like the design of the boxes. Everything is everything feels very cohesive. And even though they're like a brand new player in the sim racing space, and a lot of their stuff is a lot cheaper than other uh, sim racing companies like Fanatec and Thrustmaster, um, it is cool to see that like all of their packaging is like very cohesive. It all feels very well put together. I haven't really noticed any quality issues with any of the stuff that I have. I know some people have experienced problems with some stuff from Moza, but so far I have had a pretty good experience. So, in here we have, if I can get it out, the clutch pedal and nothing else. Toss that to the side. Alright, so here is our clutch pedal. Let's go ahead and take this out of the plastic. Boom, there we go. It's literally just a clutch pedal. Feels pretty good. It's got quite a bit of resistance to it. I'm gonna step on it real quick just to see. Yeah, it feels good. The only thing is it obviously isn't very realistic feeling in terms of what an actual clutch feels like if you've ever driven a manual, a manual transmission car. There's no like, you can't really feel a bite point in this pedal, which is kind of the only downside, but I am coming from the G29, which you also cannot feel a bite point in that pedal. And those have been working just fine for me. 
So you've got your connector here. This will plug, if it'll focus, I doubt it. Really playing around with focus in this video. Whatever, it's just a normal RJ connector. I actually really do want to try to get this focused. There it is. Boom, just a little RJ connector that'll plug into the rest of the pedals. And then you've got your pedal face here. I believe this is aluminum. I don't actually know, but it's definitely metal. They're not plastic and they feel very high quality. So just reading this little label. Yeah, feels good. I'm excited. So that is our clutch pedal. So finally, last but not least, we will be getting into the most important piece of this entire setup, our wheelbase. Now, over the past couple of days, I have been thinking to myself, Mauna, you may have made the wrong decision in purchasing the particular base that you purchased. And the reason why I say that is because, you know, just based off of reading what everyone else has been saying about Moza and direct drive in general, I fear that I purchased the wrong base. So I'm really hoping that that isn't the case and I won't have to try to flip this thing and replace it with what I think I should have gotten. But we're gonna find out. So in this box, ladies and gentlemen, we have the R5. So this is Moza's cheapest and lowest torque base. And the first word I said there, cheapest, is the main reason why I got this. I didn't want to spend too much on this new setup, although I knew I was going to have to shell out some money for it. I didn't want to spend too much. So that's why I went with the R5 over something like the R9. You're probably wondering why I didn't just get the R5 bundle. Well, I figured since I was upgrading to direct drive, there was no reason for me to just get normal pedals. I wanted load cell pedals. So I bought the R5 standalone and then picked up the SRP pedals, which again, are not here yet. But yeah, that's the reason why I didn't go with the bundle. And then I also wanted the CS wheel, not the ES wheel, which is another reason why I'm thinking I may have bought the wrong base because some people have said that the CS wheel is a little bit too heavy for the R5 and you can't really feel the force feedback like you normally would. But I guess I will be the judge of that. I'll be able to tell. I would imagine it'll probably be a huge upgrade from the Logitech G29 regardless. But yeah, so those are just a couple of things that I'm a little bit unsure about. I've been questioning my judgment on whether or not I should have gotten the R5 or the R9. It's like something I've been going back and forth about kind of in my thoughts. Anyways, enough about my internal dilemmas. Let's go ahead and crack open this box. I'm excited because this thing is tiny. Like it's going to take up so much less space on my desk than the G29 did. I'm really looking forward to this. So up top, we've got some Moza Racing stickers as well as the Quick Start Guide. Toss that to the side. In here, we have what I believe is the USB cable, and then what also looks like some mounting screws and an Allen key. Good to see. In here, we have the power cable for the base. This is like a normal PC power cable, which is kind of cool to see. Interesting. Not actually at all what I thought that this base used for power. Take off this foam. Ooh. So we have another cable in here, which is, oh, okay, I see. So it's like a two-part power thing. So this is like the main adapter, and then that other cable will just plug right in there. Cool. This one is actually Moza branded. I remember I was watching a video on the R9, and it came with like a generic, uh, generic power adapter, so it's cool to see that this one is Moza branded, but probably not actually manufactured by them, most likely. Wow, this thing is tiny. So this is what we've all been waiting for. It's got some heft to it. The Moza R5. 
comes in this nice little Mozart Racing bag. I'm super excited for this. I'm finally making the jump to direct drive. Let's see if we can figure this out. Wow. This thing is tiny, dude. It's super small. Look at that. That's crazy. Look at how small this thing is. I'm like looking at it compared to my G29 and I'll show you guys in a second, but like compared to my G29, this thing is tiny. Now the one thing I'll say, which people like choose not to comment on until like they actually turn the base on, this, this is the, the, the motor shaft. It feels a little bit notchy, but I would imagine that once I like actually get it turned on and get things working, that that will not be the case. Wow, I'm just like in awe of how tiny it is. And it's like, it's, it's clearly, it's very dense. Like it's kind of heavy, but it's also not like insane, insane heavy. That's really cool. So on the back here, we've got a Mozart Racing logo up top, and then you've got your pedal port, which would only be for the SRP light pedals, the SRP regular pedals, the regular SRP pedals, I should say, connect over USB. They do not have a port like this. Then you've got your dash, which I do not have, USB out for the base DC input, so that's where the power connector will go, and then just a simple on and off button. So the only thing I'll say in terms of quality is that like the seam here isn't the smoothest. It's not like as well aligned as I feel like it could be, but I'm pretty sure this is the cheapest direct drive wheelbase you can buy at the moment. And honestly, for what it's worth, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. So there we have it. Let's go ahead and take off this sticker because I, I really want to try out this quick release. So there we have our pins that will interface with the wheel. And matter of fact, so let me set this down here. I will grab my wheel. So if I do the same thing to the wheel, peel this off, you'll see we've got the pins in there that will connect to the base. So, in theory, all I have to do is make sure that this is lined up, and it should just... Wow, that was really satisfying. Wow. I see why everyone really loves this quick release. Because it, it is quick. Looks like I didn't really lock it on properly. Yeah, it looks like I'm not really locking it in correctly. Um, let's see here, match this up. Oh, okay, now it's on there. Yeah, that's really solid, that feels good. And then we just come here and it lifts off. Nice, cool. I'm very, very excited about this. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and get this all mounted to my desk, but obviously we still have to open up our pedal set, so you guys will see that. But me, I'm about to go and play with this a little bit, get it hooked up to my computer, just to make sure that everything is working, so that when I do get the pedals and unbox those for you guys, I know that we won't have any issues with that part of the video. So I will see you guys on Tuesday, but for you guys, just a couple of seconds when I finally get my SRP pedals. All right, and a couple days later, we are back with the full set of SRP racing pedals. So these actually just came in earlier today, and here we are now unboxing them uh, as a part of the rest of the video. So I already showed you guys the singular clutch pedal, which I also got and will be making part of the setup. But again, this is the actual full set of pedals. So let's go ahead and crack into these. So I'm really excited for these. Again, this pedal set is the reason why I didn't get the R5 bundle because I figured if I'm getting a brand new sim racing setup, I'm getting 
brand new shifter, brand new wheel and wheelbase, I might as well make the jump to load cell pedals. So that's exactly what I did. If there was any way I could have gotten a bundle with like the SRP load cell pedals, then maybe I would have considered it, but I also wanted the CS wheel and not the ES wheel. So that was another reason why I went with no bundle. So up top here we have some Moza Racing, Moza, Moza, some people pronounce it differently. Some Moza Racing stickers in here. There's also these two little adhesive pads for securing it on hardwood floor. Now, as you can see, I am on a carpet and I do not have a rig, so I probably won't be using these, but when I go to my dorm, and I will be making a dorm setup video when I move in there, so make sure to stay tuned for that. But when I go in there, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have hardwood floors in there, so I'll probably be using these two adhesive pads because I will not have a rig. So we have those two adhesive pads, some stickers, and the manual. Then up top here, just a little foam piece, we have our foot plate. Let's go ahead and pull this out. So, got a metal foot plate here with the Moza logo, like that. And then on the back, you just have some holes that go through to the front. Pretty basic. There's also this little rubber piece, which from what I've seen in like other videos and stuff is actually supposed to be like stuck on to the pedals somehow. I believe. I don't know why it came off. And it's also only on one side, which is a little bit weird. And the other one isn't in the box or anything, but I guess there's that. Then if we take this off in here, this is where we get to the good stuff. Sorry about that. So, in here, we've got our brake pedal. So, we'll actually, let's take out these cables first. So, we've got a bag of cables, just like we have with every other thing we've unboxed so far. We get, oh, it looks like we have an RJ connector. This looks to be an RJ. Uh, I actually don't know which one, but it's kind of like the, like an Ethernet cable, essentially. If I can get it to focus here. Boom. So there we go. Little RJ connector. Now, I was under the impression that these pedals, it's a Cat5e cable. I was under the impression that these pedals do not have a way to connect them directly to a base. So I'm not 100% sure what this cable is for, but I guess we're about to find out. Then the other cable that's included is more of what I was expecting a USB cable just like all the other ones that came with the base and the shifter. In addition to that in this bag we have some tools so there's a wrench, a few screws, a couple allen keys, and some nuts. So those are probably all to assemble the pedals and put everything together which I will do probably off camera. Now we can crack into the actual pedals themselves. First up, we have our brake pedal. Let's go ahead and take that out. So we've got our brake pedal here, as you can see. Nice brake pedal, looks just like the clutch pedal, which I'll take out of the box a little bit later to show you all three of them together. But yeah, we've got our brake pedal here. You've got the connectors or the cables for the load cell and the potentiometer. Doesn't really want to focus here. There we go. So you've got the cables for the load cell and the potentiometer. Feels good. It's stiff for sure. You can see right now we have the yellow spring on there. There we go. So you can see right now we have the yellow spring on there and then there's also this like uh, elastomer, I guess is what that is. That'll give us our second level of resistance on the brake. Feels good. May swap that out for another spring depending on how it feels. And finally we have the accelerator pedal and nothing else it seems so we can toss that to the side. 
and we've got our accelerator pedal so yeah here it is like so see if we can get that to focus having a lot of focus issues with this camera here there we go and then the accelerator pedal is what everything interfaces into so you've got all the ports there clutch brake position sensor and your load cell connector and then on the other side here you can see we've got our cable for the accelerator which actually will plug right in there you've got a wheelbase connection right there so again I believe the art if we can get this to focus here there we go so I believe the R12 has a provision for connecting it like over an ethernet style RJ connector but I do not believe that my base the R5 does so we'll have to look into that and then of course you have your USB port which is what I will probably be using most likely so yeah those are our pedals I'm gonna go ahead and get those mounted to the base plate and then show you guys what that looks like alrighty guys so we have the pedals mounted up to the heel plate so it's literally just as simple as connecting all the pedals so as you can see on the underside here everything plugs into the throttle pedal which is over here on this side everything plugs into the throttle pedal so I just routed all the cables and then I screwed the pedals into their positions now you have a little bit of adjustment kind of in between here for moving the brake pedal closer to one side or another but I just chose to kind of center all of them that's probably the best place to put them a couple of things that I did neglect to show inside that bag with all the tools and the hardware you also get these adhesive cable organizers I completely missed them when I was setting up my pedals but it's important to note that they do include those just in case you kind of want to manage the cables underneath the pedals a little bit better but now that everything has been unboxed and shown to you guys that means it is finally time for me to get this thing set up on my rig which is literally just a table with my PC and my monitor and yeah we're gonna get that all hooked up and I'm gonna show you guys what the setup looks like so alrighty guys so we are here at my desk as you can see uh, there's kind of quite a bit of mess of wires here as I have everything plugged in so I've got the wheel the shifter and my handbrake which you've seen in my previous setup if you've watched the video where I was doing some drifting in a set of Corsa so I've got the wheel the handbrake and the shifter all plugged into an anchor USB hub that I got off Amazon just because I don't have enough USB ports directly on my computer I will say that a lot of people in the Moza racing community recommend that you connect your Moza gear directly to your computer just so you don't have any issues with the hub you're using not being able to power all the components and making sure that you're getting the optimal use out of the USB controllers in your computer but I have been testing it for a couple of days with just the hub, like plugging it into the hub, no issues there. Uh, if you guys remember when I did the unboxing, I mentioned that there were two cables that came with the pedals, which you can't see. I don't have a foot cam at the moment, but if that's something you guys do want to see, please let me know. But yeah, so as I mentioned, there were two cables that came in the box. There was that Ethernet type cable, I believe it's an RJ12 maybe, and a USB cable, kind of like the ones that came for the base and the shifter. I discovered that I can actually plug the pedals directly into the base. This base is normally configured with the R5 bundle which comes with the SRP light pedals and those pedals plug directly into the base but before now people didn't really plug the pedals into the base, the normal SRP pedals, but it seems like mine can so that's exactly what I did. So I have the pedals plugged directly into the base just to eliminate some of the wear on my USB controller because I'm pretty filled up on USB ports. So one weird thing about that, and you'll see that once I turn the base on, is it doesn't quite pick them up as SRP pedals, but they do work and function perfectly fine. So we're just going to go ahead and press the button on the back of our base here. And you can see the light on our steering wheel has come on and everything is here. So just to show you guys the quick release real quick. So you just pull back on see if I can see if I can get this in a convenient way so you kind of just pull back on this to get it off and then 
when you're lining it up, you just make sure that the steel balls are lined up with the grooves on the base. I believe, should be it. I've done this multiple times. Give it a firm push and it is locked on. And then the lights will come on and you'll see it's registered. So we're here in what Moza calls their pit house software. So this is what you use to manage everything that you have Moza. Um, so you'll see over here in the uh, bottom right corner, it says SRP light pedals with an image of the SRP light pedals. If I were to plug these in over USB, they would say SRP pedals just like normal, but there seems to be some sort of weird software thing going on where it doesn't fully recognize them as SRP pedals. Maybe because it assumes that if pedals are plugged into the base, they are SRP light pedals because that's normally the only thing that you would do. But anyways, as you can see, I'm pressing on the pedals. Everything does work and function properly. Same with the wheel. Now, another cool thing that I really like about having a Moza wheel is the fact that there is actually an app. So give me one second to pull this up. So I don't have a good way of showing you my screen through the camera, so I'm just gonna insert a little uh, screen recording here of my phone. So we open the app and we hit the connect button and it should pick up the base over Bluetooth. Takes a little second. Sometimes you have to search for it a couple times, but it usually picks it up pretty quickly. All right, as you can see, we hit the, the button on the welcome screen. It says Bluetooth connect. It's got my base, it's found it, and it's trying to connect to it. And it says connected. So it shows us the status of the wheelbase, the steering wheel, which should say activated. I'm not sure why it says in, oh, there it goes. It says activated and dash display, but that's obviously not connected. So if we hit enter the car, I haven't quite jumped into everything here in Pit House, but you can see that we can actually adjust all of the settings for our wheel right here on the app. So you've got everything from your different presets, the steering angle of the wheel, adjusting your road sensitivity, your force feedback intensity, wheel speed, all that good stuff. You've even got the advanced settings like reversing force feedback, hands-off protection, and then you've got the force feedback equalizer, which is in landscape mode, not portrait, which does make it easier to change. It's more like what you would see on the pit house software, which I'll show you guys in a second. You've got settings for the steering wheel itself, so you can adjust like the engine RPM lighting, you can adjust the dash display if I had one. I can also view the pedals. I can't see the input of the pedals, but I can um, manage the pedals themselves, or can I? Yeah, no, I can't. But I can see the pedals themselves. Looks like this here, the like top navigation bar is in Chinese, so that might be a little language bug, but that's cool to see. And yeah, so basically everything you can do from the Pit House software on your computer, you can do in the Pit House app on your phone. So if you're in the middle of a game and you need to adjust your settings real quick and you don't wanna have to alt tab out of the game and then tab into Pit House and change your settings and come back, you can just pick up your phone real quick, connect it to your base and change your settings here. But I'll also go through some of the same things here on Pit House on my computer. So from the home page, you can see the steering wheel. You can see its angle. You can adjust the maximum steering angle and select the center point for the wheel. So like if I turn the wheel here and I want that to be center, I just click center and now the wheel is centered there. And then I can turn it back to what should actually be center if I was a normal person. Hit center and then that's calibrated as dead center. One really cool thing, and again, this is my first direct drive sim racing experience or first time owning a direct drive sim racing base. So the cool thing is that there's no physical like stop inside this wheel. So theoretically, I could just keep turning it however long I want to. Now you'll see that it's kind of like I'm, it's resisting me and there's like a built-in like software stop for it. You can select for it to like kind of push back on you when you reach a certain lock. And that also depends on your maximum steering angle. So if I set my maximum steering angle here to 2000, for example, you can see I'm just turning and turning it. And again, it all depends on what you have set because physically inside the motor, it can just keep spinning for however long you want it to. 
which is really, really cool. Then over here from the home page, you can adjust the force feedback intensity of the base itself. I have it set to 100, which is perfectly fine for all the games that I've played, especially since it's the R5, which is the lowest torque base that they make. You want to take advantage of all of that force feedback. So what I would recommend and what a lot of other people recommend is you set it to 100 here in Pit House, and then in whatever game you're playing, you can dial in the force feedback settings in whatever game you're playing. And then here on the bottom right, just once again, you can see your pedal outputs. There aren't really two very, there aren't really many settings you can adjust on the pedals here, but you can adjust the minimum and maximum for the pedals from this home page. So if we jump into this tab here, this are these are the settings for the bass. So we'll just jump into the basic settings. There's a little basic settings tab that you guys can't see because it's covered by my face cam. Hello. So here is where you can change your maximum steering angle. So I'm gonna set that back to 900 because that's what I keep it at for most of the games that I play. So there's a little synchronous toggle here for maximum steering angle and I believe this other one is maximum limit angle. So if I'm correct, I believe the maximum limit angle is like where the base will stop you from turning. Maximum steering angle is what it'll send to the game. So if you only want the wheel to rotate like a full, like 900 degrees from lock to lock, but you want to send the game like 2000 degrees for whatever reason, you would just uncheck the synchronous, set your maximum steering angle to 2000, set your maximum limit angle to whatever you want the wheel to physically stop at, and that would do its thing. Over here, we can adjust our force feedback intensity, and I'll come back to road sensitivity in a second. Over here, we can adjust our force feedback intensity just like we could on the homepage. You can also adjust your maximum wheel speed, your wheel spring strength, which for pretty much every game, you're gonna to wanna to keep that at zero. This is mostly for games that don't have like a built-in centering with their force feedback, which pretty much every game that has force feedback, every modern racing game that has force feedback will center your wheel for you in some way or another. So for the most part, you're gonna to wanna to leave that at zero. And then you have your wheel damper, which you can kind of read this. It just adds some dampening, makes the wheel a little bit more stable. You usually want a little bit of wheel damper for most games. So I'll jump back over here to road sensitivity. So this, as it says, just kind of accentuates the feel of the road through the wheel. But the reason why it's pink is because of the force feedback equalizer. So in the force feedback equalizer, you can kind of change the intensity of certain force feedback effects. So body bumps like cars hitting you, 80 kilometer an hour curb effects, so riding over the curb at around 80, miles, 80 kilometers per hour. You have the vibration from your anti-brake locking system. You have a higher speed curb effects, some grass effects, sand effects, all these different things that you can kind of adjust and fine tune. Now I have these turned down a little bit because these higher frequencies kind of create a little high pitched noise coming from the bass sometimes. It's not like a big deal, but you can still feel them, but you might wanna turn them down a little bit just to kind of alleviate some of that noise. If we go into the advanced settings, just one tab back, you have a few more extra settings. So you've got your maximum torque limit or maximum torque output. I have this set to 100 just to take full advantage of the base. You have hands off protection. I haven't really played around with this too much. I don't quite know how it works, but basically you can read what this says. It detects when you take your hands off the wheel and it'll stop rotating and kind of just maintain so it doesn't hurt you because these direct drive bases put out a lot of power, a lot of torque, and if you're not careful, you can hurt yourself. So it's important to have features like this so you can be safe while you're having fun. They also do sell an emergency stop button that you can connect to the base. You just push it and it shuts power to the base so you can, again, stay safe while you're having fun. Over here on the right, you've got natural inertia. So this kind of like, like when you're in a car and you center the wheel, like it doesn't just go back center. There's like a little bit of momentum. So this setting kind of simulates that and you can adjust that to your liking. You've got your wheel friction settings, which I don't have up right now for the uh, profile that I have selected, but you can add more friction to the wheel on top of what the game already gives you for whatever car you're driving. You've got speed dependent dampening, which is just like damping, but it will increase or decrease depending on how fast you're driving the car. And you've got your start point of the speed dependent dampening. So this 
controls like at what speed it starts to dampen the wheel. You've got your force feedback curves, which this is another thing I haven't really played around with. I feel like linear just kind of makes the most sense. Um, it corresponds directly with the game force feedback signal. It corresponds directly with the data that's coming out of the game. But if you want to change that around, experiment with different settings, you can. But I haven't really found any reason to stray from this linear curve, even though it's not a curve because it's a straight line. And then you've got some miscellaneous settings here. So this is where you set the soft limit stiffness, so how hard it will push back on you when you hit the lock. So if I turn this all the way down to one, you can see, so I've hit the lock here, but it's really easy in letting me go past that. But if I just bring it all the way to 10 on hard, it feels a lot like my G29 did, where it's like hard stopping me. It really doesn't want me to go past that. But again, that doesn't really hurt anything because this is a motor that can spin infinitely. But I found four is a pretty good setting. It doesn't really need to be much more than that, at least for me. You've also got soft limit gain force strength. So this is, I actually don't really know what this does, but you can kind of read that description and interpret it for what you will. Um, I'm not entirely sure what that does actually. I don't fully understand that. But then you've also got your temperature control strategy. So a few people have been having issues with the R9 specifically overheating and losing force feedback. Now I haven't had any overheating issues with my R5. The base does get warm under like heavy loads, like when I'm drifting or doing a lot of track driving, but it's never overheated and I, I haven't lost force feedback because of heat. It'll get a little warm to the touch, but no overheating. But you can change the temperature control strategy. So I have it set to conservative and that's what I've been running it on pretty much since I got the base. So this will be a little bit more conservative in how much, how hot it lets the base get before it starts to cut force feedback to cool itself down. And then you've also got the radical control strategy. So this will let it rise, let the temperature rise a little bit more before it starts to throttle the force feedback. So that's everything for the base. You've got a few settings for the wheel here. So you can change the mode of these sticks. So I have them set to buttons. So basically in the game, up, down, left, right are all registered as individual buttons, which is interesting because they move like normal joysticks, like on a controller, but they kind of act like a D-pad, which is really weird, but it's not like the worst thing in the world. It just would be nice if they acted as normal joysticks since they feel like normal joysticks. But you can, um, set them to where in a game they're either interpreted as buttons or as a single d-pad which is cool you've got your engine rpm indicator switch mode so you can make it an rpm indicator as i have it now or you can turn it completely off or you can just have it on and not really function you've got different display modes so each light will be independent to the other in mode one and in mode two kind of like the the light bar will change as one instead of progressively is is what that does and then you can just customize when the lights come on the timing of these you have a few presets and then you can also change those so i'm just going to set that back to normal and then you can also change the individual colors themselves as well as the brightness which is a nice touch so those are all the settings for the wheel then over here with the pedals you've got different curve settings and then as well as calibration toggles. Now I picked the kind of sloped S curve for the clutch just cause that's kind of how clutches work in real life. Like you get to, like once you get to about here, which would be kind of like your bite point, then it kind of falls off if you let go of it too much. So that's what I set my clutch to just because the clutch itself doesn't really have very much feeling and otherwise it would just be a linear clutch, which is not how clutches work in real life. Ideally, you could adjust these kinds of things for each car. If you drive one car in one game a lot, then you could probably leave this setting alone. But if you're like me and you're constantly driving multiple different cars, you can kind of just leave it here and play around with it, or you can adjust it for every single car, depending on what you want. For the brake and the throttle, I just have these set to linear. 
don't really have any ideas of how to make these feel more realistic. There probably are some better curves for this. And you can obviously also adjust them however you want, do whatever you want for your accelerator and your brake. But I'm just gonna leave those as linear. Now these next two tabs are for the dash and the hub, which I do not have. So we're gonna jump into the shifter. So I do have Moza's HGP shifter. It is a seven speed shifter. It's a little bit stiff, I'll be honest at least compared to what I'm used to, which is the Logitech driving force shifter. But it's it's really good, I like it a lot. I do wish it wasn't as stiff, cause it kind of, I don't know if you guys can see, but it kind of shakes my monitor and my whole desk a little bit when I do shift, but it's good. The push down reverse works well. You again also have to push down to get into seventh gear. Now there aren't really that many cars in Assetto Corsa that have seventh gear transmission, or seven gear transmission, so. I haven't really gotten a chance to play around with this and see if having to push down to get into seventh gear is a problem, but I don't know. I guess because you don't use seventh gear that often, it's nice that there is a little bit of a lockout so you don't accidentally go into seventh instead of fifth, for example, but I digress. So yeah, these are all of the settings you get for the shifter. One cool advantage if you're using Moza pedals with the shifter you have an automatic rev matching system which you can turn on up here in the right. I haven't tried it out, I may try it out later and kind of experiment it with it to see how good it is, but this is another one of those things where changing it for one car may not have the same effect as another car, because some cars rev up faster than others, some have higher or lower rev limits, and depending on you know what you're doing, the rev match is gonna be slightly different for each car. So I haven't really played around with this yet, mostly because I feel like it's something I would have to change for every single car I drive, but I will try it out at a later point and let you guys know what my experience with that is. Then you also have your calibration for the shifter, which is really important to do. One important note when you're calibrating the shifter, it'll make it seem, so here, you says, here it says, press the shift lever and move it back and forth from far left to far right within 20 seconds. Note that you do not need to put it in any gear. Now, if you're like me and you read this without watching any videos or instruction, you'll think it just means, okay, press the shift lever down, move it far left, far right, and then you're done within 10 seconds. What it actually wants you to do is keep doing that for the entire 10 seconds. And then once it says calibration successful, it will be calibrated. I struggled with this for a few minutes when I first got the shifter and had to set it up because I was like, huh, this is not working. I'm doing what it's telling me to do. I really hope my shifter isn't faulty because it took long enough to get here already. Then after watching a couple videos, they were like, yeah, you have to push it down and keep doing it for the whole 10 seconds before it actually calibrates. And now you can see, oop, sorry about that. Now you can see that it shifts and registers all of the positions just fine. That's pretty much it. There is an update section where you can update the firmware for all of your different devices for the base, the steering wheel, and the shifter, but everything is up to date there. And yeah, that's about it for the pit house software. So what I'm gonna do now is jump into Assetto Corsa. We'll drive around a track and talk a little bit about what my experience is like using a direct drive base as someone coming from a Logitech G29. So I'll see you guys on track. Alrighty, also we are here on track in the Bach Mono. I've been really obsessed with this car lately. And yeah, so we're just gonna be driving around Spa and talking a little bit about my experience with the wheel so far. So as we come out on track here, we are using the paddle shifters, which feel really good. They are magnetic paddle shifters as compared to what was on the G29. And kind of what's been so shocking to me about switching from the G29, which is a gear driven wheel to the R5, which is direct drive is just how much better everything feels and also how much quieter it is. 
If you've ever used a G29 or know anything about gear and belt driven wheels. Oh. Whoops. Didn't see that. Um, if you know anything about the G29 and gear and belt driven wheels, you'll know that they're very loud. You feel, or like you hear all of the clunking when the force feedback is going. And if you're, you know, living with people as I am when I'm at home and not at college, and there's like other people near you and it's late at night, things are loud and it's, it can be disruptive for other people around you. And in general, it's not like a pleasant sound to hear. Didn't break enough there. So it's really refreshing to have a bass that's pretty much completely silent except for like higher frequency force feedback areas. And it also just feels way more precise, like you get a lot more information through the wheel. Did not break enough there. Now one thing that you'll notice, I'm <laughs> not really breaking that well, and that kind of brings me to my next little point, is switching to a load cell brake. So the G29's pedal set is pretty good for just like a normal beginner pedal set, but the brake is entirely like position based not pressure based like the SRP pedals are because they have a load cell. So it really matters how much pressure you put on the brake and I'm still kind of getting used to how hard I need to press the brake in order to stop when I want to stop. And the other thing is I don't have these pedals properly mounted. I'm kind of, I have them like stuck onto a mat using those adhesive pads. So there is a little bit of flex in the pedals. Not the pedals themselves, but kind of like in the positioning of the pedals. So, still kind of getting used to that whole system. But honestly, my overall thoughts using... using the R5 and the SRP pedals are really positive. I've really enjoyed my experience with them so far. I definitely don't regret going Boza. And I definitely don't regret that was not supposed to happen. I definitely don't regret going Moza, and I definitely don't regret upgrading to direct drive. The G29 was fun, and I've had it for, I want to say about two years at this point. But I was kind of ready for something new. I was kind of ready to move on into the next step. And I'm still in college, so it doesn't really make sense for me to get like a full rig with a chair and all that good stuff but I think that the R5 and the SRP pedals are gonna serve me really well for a really long time like I don't anticipate myself upgrading to a different setup anytime soon and honestly for the next few years one of the things I was worried about when I picked the R5 over the R9 I think it's like a hundred dollar difference in like the kit that I spec out. I was worried like you know a lot of people say that they try the R5 and they're like oh wow I need more power and I don't know if it's because I'm not coming from another direct drive base and I'm coming from the G29 which apparently outputs around 2.1 newton meters of torque compared to the R5's five and a half but the R5 feels like plenty for me there's plenty of road detail aside from this car which I haven't really driven a lot but I've become obsessed with lately I can really feel when the car is slipping out from under me there's a lot more control and everything. And 
generally I feel a lot more confident using this wheel. Another thing I really like about this new setup is the wheel rim itself. The CS wheel is absolutely fantastic. The shifters are nice and clicky. I kind of thought that I'd be using the silencing pads, but they're honestly not that bad. Anything beats the clunk of a Logitech G29. Ooh, I was doing so well. But yeah, uh, the wheel itself is really, really good. It doesn't quite feel like the leather of the G29 steering wheel, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It doesn't feel worse, but it doesn't feel the same. Which again, not necessarily a bad thing. Still feels really good in the hand. Another thing that some people were saying was that the CS wheel was too big and too heavy for the R5 in terms of force feedback, so like, you would lose a lot of detail, but I honestly haven't found that to be the case in my time using the R5 and the CS wheel. It's not a very common or popular combination from what I've seen online, but it honestly works fine for me. I don't feel like I'm losing that much detail by using this bigger, heavier rim on a wheelbase that maybe wasn't necessarily designed with bigger wheels and heavier wheels in mind. One of the reasons why I didn't get the R5 bundle with the ES wheel is specifically because I wanted the CS wheel, because I wanted all the extra inputs, I wanted the magnetic paddle shifters. Uh, and I can say I really do enjoy slow down way too much there. I really do enjoy having the extra inputs and the dual rotary encoder. So I actually have this one set to my traction control just as it's mapped. And I have this one set to turbo, which this car doesn't have. Turbo adjustments. Almost lost it there. And then I've got this for glancing side to side and actually to the rear if I want. Didn't botch it that time. So yeah, all in all, it's been a really, really good experience. Absolutely no complaints. And ooh, I would 100% recommend, honestly, this exact setup. If you're not like a serious, like professional sim racer and you just like to sim race for fun and you want like a really solid setup that will you know feel like it's high quality but you're not going overboard I honestly feel like this is really all you need Ooh. like you could always go R9 just to have that like extra headroom But in terms of what you actually need, I would say that the R5 pretty much fulfills those needs pretty well. I, uh, like I said, I think I mentioned it earlier in the video, like even before I started driving, I was like, I really hope I didn't make a mistake by not spending the extra $100 and just getting the R9 for the added headroom if I ever want more power and more torque. But honestly, the R5, like I said, feels perfectly fine, especially coming from a Logitech G29. You feel so much more detail 
the forces are a lot stronger, everything just feels better about the overall racing experience, and everything just feels so much more immersive, so much more, yeah, I guess immersive and cool, like, you really feel like you're driving, and when you combine that with, when you combine that with a VR setup, like what I've been using for the past couple weeks, which I should be making a video on pretty soon, when you combine that with a, a good VR setup and a good shifter and a handbrake and a solid set of pedals, it all really comes together and just tr completely transforms the experience. And again, I'm not like a serious sim driver. I don't really do competitions or races or anything like that. I really just sim race for fun because I love cars and I love driving just that entire world. And having something like this, which isn't too crazy, doesn't really break the bank like that, a uh, relatively entry level direct drive sim, sim racing setup. To have this and a VR headset, it all feels really, really cool. And I've really enjoyed my experience with the R5, I've really enjoyed my direct drive experience, and I think overall it's been a really good buy. So if you guys are interested in picking up the R5 or really anything that I have here, I will link everything down in the description exactly how I expect it, but also make sure to check Moses' website and see what works for you based on what you need. They have a bunch of different other wheel rims and I think four other bases other than this. They have the R9, the R12, the R16, and the R21, which all offer different levels of force feedback according that correspond to their numbers. Um, I really like the shifter. I haven't really done any driving with the shifter in this game. I'm actually not going to just because my mom's actually sleeping and this would be a little bit too loud for her, but I will make sure to get some shifter gameplay for you guys in a future video. But the shifter does feel solid. If you guys want to pick up the shifter too, I feel like it's a really great shifter for the money. And the pedals, yeah, pedals are great. The accelerator, clutch, all feel good. I wish that the clutch didn't feel exactly the same as the accelerator. I wish it was weighted a little bit differently. The spring is exactly the same. And in fact, the, pedal, the, the pedals themselves, the hardware is exactly the same. It's just a different pedal face and a different connector and what it's mapped to and all that good stuff. But I do wish the clutch felt a little bit different, but all in all, they are good pedals. The brake is gonna take me some time to get used to, but it is a load cell brake and at a pretty affordable price. So you're not really gonna need to upgrade these pedals. Again, if you're not like a super serious sim racer, you're just doing it for fun like I am. All in all, I really do enjoy this setup. Uh, again, everything will be linked in the description below. But other than that, I think that's going to be it for this video. Let me know if you guys want to see anything specific with the CS wheel, the R5 base, the HGP shifter, and the SRP pedals. If there's anything specific you want to see, any questions you guys have, let me know down in the comment section below, and I will do my best to answer them and maybe make a couple videos for you guys. Expect a drifting video, drifting with a direct drive wheelbase. A lot of people say that it takes some time to transition. It honestly didn't really take me that long, but you'll see that in an upcoming video. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.